morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 28 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle. It really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to get off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. We welcome your calls on the bright side. Our number is 855-660-4261. If you're dealing with a health challenge, you just don't know what to do, you're sick of taking drugs, you know the drugs aren't working, you're sick of going to the doctor, you know the doctor's not helping you, you're sick of dealing with insurance companies, you want to get better, we can help you do it. 855-660-4261 is your number, and if you have a success story, we love hearing success stories, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 855-660-4261 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products that you hear us talk about, or if you want to Start yourself a longevity business and earn some thank you checks. Help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. Help a friend, help a loved one, help a workmate get off their drugs, get on a good nutritional supplement program. Call the Brightside Ben phone team for a one time $10 fee. You can start a longevity business. 866 735 2470 is their number. They're friendly and knowledgeable. They know all about the products, they know all about the business. Some of them are making a, a bunch of money. Using the selling the longevity products, using the longevity products, showing folks the longevity products, including the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and the Biolumin Nightly Essence, now the Beyond Organic products from Jordan Rubin. They're all up at my website, by the way, too, at brightsideben.com. You'll also find a Join the Team link that you can click on. If you don't want to call the Brightside Ben phone team, click on the Join the Team link or pull down on the shopping cart and purchase any of the products that you like or that you hear, hear us advertise or recommend on the program. It's all up at brightsideben.com. Also, I want to encourage you to check out my blog, pharmacistben.com which we update regularly with news stories as well as blog posts. Thank you to Robert Lundgren, who does such a fine job keeping that uh, pharmacistben.com website up to date. Thank you, Robert. I appreciate your work. All right. We're going to talk to Ori Hoffmeckler, the author of The Warrior Diet in the Bottom of the Hour. The Warrior Diet is one of my all-time favorites. That was the second edition. I read the first edition probably eight or nine years ago. Uh, and Ori's work is just spectacular. This is, if you, have to pick, if you have to get one book about nutrition and diet, this is the book to get. It's called The Warrior Diet. And everything he talks about is just right on, absolutely right on. I'm very excited to talk to Ori. We talked to him a few years ago. I think it was on the bright side. One of, one of the programs I was doing, I forgot which program it was, we talked to Ori. He also has another book called The Anti-Estrogenic Diet. He's got a lot of interesting things to say about estrogen and foods. He's got great stuff to say about fermented foods, about intermittent fasting, about being a warrior, because that's what it's really all about when we talk about health and nutrition and and recovery and regeneration and accessing the body's healing systems, healing mechanisms, what we're talking about is being a warrior. You know, life's got, life has its ups and downs. There's all kinds of health challenges that we deal with from uh, our corrupted food supply or adulterated water, for drugs in the water, chemicals in the air, chemtrails. It does us no good to, to, uh, to just whine and moan about the problems. What we want to do is we want to learn to be warriors. We want to learn to be tough. We want to learn to be resilient. We l- want to learn to be able to handle the ups and downs. We want to learn how to be able to handle the toxicity, and that's what it means to be a warrior, and that's what Ori talks about in his book, The Warrior 
your diet. Subtitle, switch on. Check this out, guys. Switch on your biological powerhouse. That's the body for high energy, explosive strength, and a leaner, harder body. We'll talk to Ori at the bottom of the hour. We'll take your phone calls in our, in our next segment. So if you have uh, questions or comments, or if you want to uh, help somebody get off, help yourself get off your medications and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we'll get your calls here in our second segment, and then we'll talk to Ori in the bottom of the hour. Okay, so last we spoke, we were graphically addressing the details of long-term chronic breakdown in the body, of long-term chronic defensive response, defensive chemistry, the response, the, the defensive chemistry response in the body, the cellular version, the biological version of blood and guts and gore. That's what happens when you have a long-term defensive response in the body. This is what degenerative disease ultimately arises from, all degenerative disease, all capital A-L-L, -L, all degenerative disease ultimately resides from this overburdened defensive uh, defense system, an overburdened defense system that leads to an exaggerated long-term chronic defensive response. And this long-term chronic defensive response shows up as the cellular version of Gettysburg, the cellular version of, the, of a Civil War battle, or Normandy, or World War II battle, or a, a World War I battle. It's blood and guts and carnage at the cellular level. At the cellular level, we've got an immune system or a defensive system that is like a high-tech science fiction system that deserves our greatest awe and appreciation and honor and respect. And unfortunately, because it's microscopic, we don't think of it that way. It just kind of goes over our heads. This defensive response, this long-term chronic defensive response, ultimately creates pockets and barriers and walls and dead cells and toxic debris. And it's very important that we picture this in our head. Folks, there's not a drug on planet Earth that can help you here. In fact, drugs are just going to make it worse. And there's not a surgical procedure that can help us here. You can't take your gallbladder out and eliminate this defensive response. You can't take your thyroid out and eliminate this kind of response in the body. It's just going to make matters worse. When the immune system is activated against poisons, it enlists this high-tech science fiction weaponry that is just mind-blowing. And the end result is blood and guts and cellular corpses. And keep in mind, this is all happening in tissues that are aligned with electrical energy, lined with nerves. So you get this toxic debris, and then you've got nerves that are kind of lining the tissues, and the toxic debris is scattered about the same areas that these electrical nerves are. Body's got four types of tissue it's made up of, four types of stuff that it's made of. It's made up of muscles and connective tissue. That's the bulk of it. That's the meat. That's the, that's the steak of us. That's the beef of us. That's the bulk of us. And then this connective tissue and muscle matrix, or beef, has electrical wiring. That's the nerves. And then it's all coated with a candy coating. That's called epithelia. And that's it. The epithelia also composes the glands. So you've got the epithelia, that's the coating. You've got the electrical wiring, that's the nerves. And then you've got the connective tissue and the muscle tissue, that's the bulk. That's the body. That's it, in a nutshell. When these connective tissue in the matrix, the beef, the connective tissue and the muscle tissue becomes toxic, and these little pockets of toxicity, these toxic waste dumps are scattered throughout the body. And then there's lots of fibers. Remember the fibers and the grout, the kind of, uh, the kind of uh, 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 walls that are, what am I trying to say here? The, the secretions that kind of fill in the, the fibers. You've got these secretions that fill in the fibers and they form a wall. Eventually, you're going to get irritation in the nerves. Eventually, all of these pockets of fibers and, and grout that are sequestering the the, the toxic areas, eventually you're going to get irritation of the electrical wiring, the nerves. The nerve irritation is going to be perceived as pain. And because the pain is in the muscles and because it involves fibers, you're going to go to the doctor and you're going to tell him, oh, doc, my muscles really hurt. It's all my muscles. I can't figure out what it is. And the doctor will go, oh, hmm, you got muscle fiber pain. Ah, you have fibromyalgia which is, of course, the Latin term for muscle fiber pain. And then you're going to get a $200 bill. And then maybe, if you're lucky, you'll get a prescription for Prozac or for a Percocet or for some kind of pain pill. So you go to the doctor, you tell him you got muscle fiber pain, and he goes and turns around and tells you, oh, you have fibromyalgia. So he names your muscle fiber pain in Latin, sends, gives you a bill, and then gives you a prescription. What the heck? What is this about? Of course your doctor can't help you if you have muscle fiber pain that's secondary to toxicity. Hang tight, I'll finish up. We come back from our... Yeah. All right, we're
we're back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben, 866, or I'm sorry, 855-660-4261 is our call in number. We're going to talk to Ori Hoffmeckler about his book, The Warrior Diet, in the bottom of the hour. So if you've got phone calls or if you've got questions, we'll take your phone calls here in this segment. Um, I, just, I want to just say a couple more things. We'll finish up on fibromyalgia and tell you how you can really address fibromyalgia because your doctor can't do it. doctor doesn't know how to handle it because it's a non-local problem. In fact, all disease is really non-local in the sense that it's not happening just where you think the disease is happening. It's happening throughout the body, which is why if you're going to reverse degenerative disease, and make no mistake about it, all degenerative disease is reversible. If you're going to do it, you've got to address the body as a whole. The medical model wants us running hither and thither, to and fro. It'll tell you, oh, it's your, it's your nerves. Oh, it's your brain. Oh, it's your skin. Oh, it's your pancreas. Oh, it's your liver. Oh, it's your big toe. Oh, it's different parts of the body. And you'll be on a drug for your toe and a drug for your liver and a drug for your pancreas and a drug for your head and a brain and every other part of your body. That's not how it works. That is the dumbest, dumbest idea in all of healthcare is that you can target specific organs using drugs. And it's what allows us to participate in this ridiculous model that uses poison to heal us, that cuts out our organs to heal us, that ablates our heart, destroys our heart, destroys our thyroid with radioactivity to heal us. It's because we don't focus on the body as a system. The good news is, once you focus on the simple things, the little things, the body as a system, through good food, through a good nutritional supplement program like the one Doc Wallach designed, the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients and the Healthy Start Pack, clean air, blowing out carbon dioxide and, and exhaling correctly, and making sure you're drinking water, and making sure you're addressing the physical, the, the, the uh, psychological, spiritual, mental, and emotional dimensions, every single degenerative disease is reversible. But if you target specific organs, it just isn't going to work. Fibromyalgia is just an iconic, classic textbook case of a, a diffuse, holistic problem in the body. That's why the doctor can't do anything. What's he going to do, take your muscles out? I, he might try. I, that might be a surgical procedure of the future muscle removal, muscle muscle transplants, but other than that, shy of that, there's not, not much he can do. If you've got toxins that are depositing in the muscular system, in the, in the meat of the body, but if you get to the core where the toxicity is coming from, and that usually means uh, something in the digestive tract, SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, we'll talk about some of these ideas tomorrow, fibromyalgia, poof, no more. And you're going to think it's a miracle, but it ain't a miracle. It's not a miracle. It's just the way the body works. All right. Uh, let's see. We'll, we'll finish talking about fibromyalgia tomorrow. I want to get to your phone calls. We've got Ori Hoffmeckler coming in, up in the bottom of the, of the hour. Time to hit our phones. Let's see who is first on the line. Let's, let's go to Sheila in New Hampshire. What's up, Sheila? How you doing? Hi, Ben. Greetings. Was, What's going on? Good morning. I was calling back in because I had called you yesterday to tell you about my friend with the renal nephropathy. Okay. And I, I think you said, uh, is, does this make sense, IgA nephropathy? Yeah, yeah. IgA yeah, is okay. an, IG, it's classic. IgA mm -hmm. is just an immune globulin that, that helps clear out the blood. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, an, it's an immune chemical. It's one of the chemicals the body will secrete when it's under attack. And mm -hmm. these immune globulins circulate in the blood, and because the, the kidney filters the blood, they're going to end up depositing these immune complexes, these immune chemicals, defensive chemicals, if you will, that are complex or combined with the toxins. They're going to deposit in the kidneys. So the bottom line to kidney disease, and it is an epidemic. Dialysis is an epidemic. The rates of these things are increasing ridiculously. The liver and the kidney, those are our two detox organs. Is it any surprise that liver disease and kidney disease is increasing exponentially? Why should it be a surprise? These are detox systems. These are detox organs. The kidney cleans out the blood like a spaghetti strainer. It, it strains out toxins. If you have any nephropathy, so that nephro means kidney, pathy means disease, nephropathy, kidney disease, you have to focus on the blood. You can't focus on the blood directly, but you can focus on the main source of toxicity in the blood, which is food. Food, 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 food. So if you ha and, and sugar is considered a food because sugaring of the blood can also affect the kidneys. So number one, look to food allergies, food intolerances, uh, problems with the digestive system. Link those up to foods. Eliminate those foods. Do a food diary. Focus on using uh, supplements that help support digestive health. The Z-radical is spectacular for that. 
Same with the Biolumin Nightly Essence. Use fermented foods. Use the ultimate enzymes after meals. Lecithin, you'll buy that at the health food store after all fatty meals. You can take extra bile salts. You can get those at the health food store. You'll get some bile salts in the ultimate enzymes. Get extra bile salts. Take hydrochloric acid drops. You can get a compounding pharmacist to make those for you, or you can get HCL capsules. Uh, sometimes I'll put enzymes in with the capsules. You can get that at a health food store too. You'll get some betaine HCL in the ultimate enzymes. If you want one product, the ultimate enzymes will work. Use apple cider vinegar as well. Then you want to focus on blood sugar. Stabilize the blood sugar. Blood sugar problems dis glycemia, that's fancy talk for blood sugar problems, go hand in hand with kidney disease, as any diabetic will tell you. So focus on stabilizing the blood sugar by eating more protein, eating more good fat, uh, making sure you're getting your essential fatty acids and keeping your intake of refined carbohydrates, processed foods, sugars, fruit juices, all the, you know, the usual suspects, keeping your intake of those kinds of foods down. Guaranteed you'll notice results and quickly as well once you start to do these, uh, once you start to incorporate these strategies, food strategies and blood sugar strategies. And then don't forget to do your deep breathing techniques and your relaxation techniques so the body can heal itself because remember, the body heals itself when it's being rested, when it's relaxed. I call it hot tub therapy. That's when you're, on, when you're in a hot tub, that's when you do your best work, your best healing work, that is. Does that help you, Sheila? Yes, sir. I, I really appreciate that. Many of those things you listed, I've talked to him about already, so he's going to understand a little bit when Good I deal. listens to this. But one thing I want to ask you before I hang up, Ben, yeah. is should I encourage him to get a glucose tolerance factor from his primary doctor? Uh, you mean find, a glucose tolerance factor? What do you mean factor? Glucose tolerance uh, factor I mean, is, is a nutritional. Is I'm nutrition. sorry about that. The, uh, glucose glu tolerance uh, testing. A test? Like, you yeah. could. It's not necessary. He's a mess. He, what's the doctor going to do? Confirm that? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not necessary. He knows he's got a problem. You may want to do it to see if he's getting better, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't waste my time, not just yeah. yet. Focus on the, on the basics first, then later on you, could do your, you can have a blood glucose test done or glucose tolerance test or any of the things that they do. Right now, you don't need that. Right now, mm. he needs to clean the body out. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thanks, Jill. Have a beautiful day. God bless. Okay. Mary in California, what's up? Welcome to the Bright Side. Mary? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm here. Hello. Uh, Hi, Mary. Good morning. How are you? Good. Good morning. What's going on? Um, are you familiar with Schomburg's disease? Yes, I am familiar with Schomburg's disease. Why? Okay. You... Well, um, that's apparently what I have, and I'm just kind okay. of frustrated. Okay. Let's, and... let's talk. Well, yeah, I'm sure you're frustrated because they'll tell you they don't know what causes it. That's probably what they told you. We don't know. It's on your exactly. legs, right? You got it on your exactly. legs? On the front part of my legs. Um, uh, okay. My okay. It's a pigment disease. For the listeners, uh, Schomburg disease is a pigment disease. You get these dark spots uh, in rashes and, and maybe red spots. Is that is yeah. that accurate? Okay. So yeah, but, but any... it's all under the skin. There's nothing. I mean, it right. looks like. It's not under the skin. The rashes, but it's, it's, it's not under touch. the skin. No, no. It's, it looks like it's under the skin, but it's not under the skin. It's in the skin. See, the skin is made up of multiple layers. Schomburg's disease occurs in the pigmented, pigmented areas in the lower part of the skin. Anytime you have pigmented, uh, pigmentation issues, redness issues, rash issues, think immune system. In fact, drugs are classic for causing pigment, uh, pigment uh, Schomburg's disease, pigment dermatoses is what they call it. Uh, Tylenol can do it, aspirin can do it, um, uh, various interferon can do it, various drugs can do it, diabetic drugs can do it. So you got to treat it as toxicity that's getting into the body. Hang tight, I'll give you, a, I'll finish up when we come back, and then we're going to get, we're going to talk to Ori Hoffmeckler about his book, The Warrior's Diet. Don't go away, Mary, I'll finish up when we come back from our break. I'm, I'm back on the bright side. I am pharmacist Ben. Thank you for being here, friends. I'm very excited to talk to our guest, Ori Hoffmeckler. He is a military guy, a scientist and a military man. He's the author of a couple of wonderful books, Maximum Muscle, Minimum Fat, Anti-Estrogenic Diet, and my favorite of the books of his books, The Warrior Diet. I've got them in my reference library. I go back to them all the time. I've got a lot of great information from him. I highly recommend his books. Highly, highly, highly recommend his books. In fact, if you have only one book to get about diet, and about, uh, about uh, how you can burn fat and, and live a stronger, more vital life, a life more like a warrior, you want to get the warrior diet. Thank you so much for joining us, Ori. It's great to talk to you again. My pleasure, Ben. Nice okay. to talk to you again. So what's the, uh, give us, uh, let's just cut right to the chase here. What is, one of the things you say in the warrior diet is you call it a book of heresy. I think, I forgot where you put it. I think you start off the book somewhere talking about, say, I'm about to commit dietary heresy. Why is the warrior diet dietary heresy? Good question. Ten, uh, over 15 years ago, it was dietary heresy. Now millions of people 
consider it to be the ideal diet. I came with this concept, which is now called intermittent fasting, over 15 years ago. I believe I'm the first one who introduced it to the public as a diet, as a method of eating, as a natural way that humans should follow and behave. But at that time, uh, the idea of eating Less. one main meal per day was a dietary heresy. Um, as still mainstream nutrition believe that we should eat frequently many meals during the day, perhaps small meal, but many meals, that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And in my book, I prove that this is not just wrong theory, the approach of many meals during the day, breakfast, lunch, power breaks, and in between, actually shutter human health and in many ways responsible for the health crisis that our society faces today, particularly the, to the epidemics of obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular disease. And now we know, I believe, and I, I believe I can prove it, that cancer is also related to not just to overeating, to eating too many meals during the day. Mm. So I came with this concept that a human is supposed to eat only once a day. And the second concept was very controversial to say that humans are nocturnal eaters and night eaters rather than daily eaters. Mm. That really shake everything that people, shook everything that people believe at that time. No breakfast? Are you saying no breakfast, Ori? Well, you know, no breakfast is, is not a bad idea at all, but I didn't say no breakfast. I, I, I say not the typical breakfast. Uh -huh. You can still have light, watery food. You can have coffee, green tea. You can have light berries right. or even yogurt. But How about salmon? Is, How about fish or protein? In my opinion, way too early in the morning. There's no need unless you really train hard early in the morning. And in, even in this case, you rather want to put light, fast assimilating protein. Let me tell you something about the morning. The morning biologically, your body is just recuperating from the last meal, finish recuperating from the last meal and just wake up. So your body is generally in a detox mode. Mm. Um, you, bec you just wake up, the sympathetic nervous system that keep you alert and wake up just took over. And you want to encourage your body to keep waking up, to keep the alertness, to keep the activity. Biologically, when you're active and the sympathetic nervous system is dominant, most of the uh, energy is supposed to come from fat burning, not from the food that you eat. Every time that you eat a large meal, you shut down all these mechanisms. You shut down your uh, sympathetic nervous system, Mm -hmm. uh, you inhibit fat burning, you becoming actually gradually sluggish, and as you keep eating more after lunch, most people want to go to sleep because they activate a nightly nervous system that makes them sleepy. So eating large breakfast, following with the lunch, it's a lose-lose situation. You're becoming tired. You do not utilize energy the way you are biologically programmed. And basically, over time, it makes you sick. I look at another angle, Ben, and I wrote about it in my book. If you look at biologically and each species, you need to go back in time and figure out how was the species evolved. Well, we know that cats were not involved to eat cucumbers. Mm -hmm. And we know that um, rabbits are not, it did not evolve to eat meat. So we need to look at the human species and figure out carefully how did we evolve to eat. And uh, just jumping a few years later, I was always interested, not just in evolution biology, but particularly about something which is called stress science. How does stress affect organism? Particularly, how does stress affect human? Well, we were taught and believe, still most people believe, that stress is bad for us, that stress is killing us. But biologically, the truth is the opposite. Mm -hmm. We evolved 
to thrive under stress. We grow under stress. Yes, we thrive under stress. In fact, yeah. that it's the lack of stress that's killing us. Uh -huh. As long as we have the raw materials, though, as long as we have the wherewithal to exploit the stress, no? In fact, no. It's inherent to you, Ben. If I saw you out there right now without food for 24 hours, you don't need any material. No protein and building block? Called, something which is called stress response. Uh -huh. It's an evolutionally conserved mechanism that evolved about 150 million years ago, and it's basically an evolutionary concern from bacteria to human. It appears in virtually all organisms. When you fast for 24 hours or less, it kicks in. And it kicks in and you don't need nothing. It's inherent to you. It's registered. You don't need to help it. Just kick in. It's kicking mm. the same way that when you go to the gym and train. Mm. And it kicks even more so when you go and train on empty stomach. Now, stress response is a very interesting mechanism. Cutting edge science of the past 10 years, uh, scientists are now staggered with what it does to the body. In fact, there's evidence that when you go to the extremities, um, activated stress response, such as doing calories, extreme calorie restriction or fasting, can literally double the lifespan of organisms. And not just low organisms, even small animals. So, so What's the practical way you, you, could, you, you actually incorporate this idea of inter I get this question a lot. And we do talk about intermittent fasting. That's one of, our, one of the hallmark ideas that we talk about on this program. And so I understand exactly what you're saying. Tell us how we do it practically. I get this question all the time. How do you practically employ intermittent? And I love the word intermittent because that tells you that you do it, you kind of keep the body on guessing as when the fasting is going to occur, correct? Correct. What okay, hang, is we got to take or we got to go to a commercial. So hang tight, okay? We'll finish up when we come back from our break. We're talking to Ori Hoffmeckler about his. Well, he's got a bunch of great books. We're talking about the Warrior Diet. He's also got a book called The Anti-Estrogenic Diet. Hope we get to talk a little bit about that. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we are back on the Bright Side talking no. about. Corey Hoffmeckler about his book, The Warrior Diet. You can get it off Amazon.com. I highly, highly, highly recommend this book, as well as The Anti-Estrogenic Diet and, uh, and uh, Maximum Muscle, Minimum Fat if you're a bodybuilder or a weightlifter. There's a lot of great ideas there. Okay, Ori, I get a lot of questions about this idea of intermittent fasting. How do you best exploit it or how do you take advantage of it? How do you actually, in a practical sense, uh, intermittently fast? So help us out here a little bit. I'll start with the practical uh, part. Just eat one main meal a day, the rest of the day at night. It doesn't matter what time. Don't count the hours and you don't need to count calories. Have your main meal at night. During the day, either fast or incorporate certain kind of light food. I mentioned it a minute. What kind of food? That actually mimic on your body, even enhance the effect of fasting. This is, sounds like a bizarre concept, but there are certain kind of foods that mimic on your body the effect of fasting, and now hmm. we know there's certain kind of food that mimic even the effect of exercise on your body, something wow. that years ago we did not know. What foods? Oh, I am a, this, is, this is actually my new project. It's coming very soon. It's called SAF, Stress Activated Food. Okay. And think about it, Ben. We are talking about organism. We are talking about human and how important it is to not be overfed and to exercise, right? Right. Be under stress because people like yourself who eat the right diet and exercise are generally much more healthy than people who are sedentary or overweight, correct? Right. Um, how come nobody asks this question about the what are we eating? Eat? What are we like? What are healthy people eating exactly that yes, keeps them lean? It, it's not even what. It's not even whether it's a vegetable or, or, or a fruit or or a bread. How come nobody asks whether our food sources are overfed and or our food source are stressed? Huh? And like meat? Are you are you talking about correct, animals? They, they, yeah. They, they, almost an equivalent to 
the effect that exercise does on your body, there's an equivalent effect that stress is doing to plants that you eat or uh. even animal products. So in other words, the plants grow better under conditions of stress like we grow under conditions of stress? It's, is that what it's, it's beyond growing better. It lives longer. It uh-huh. produces compounds that protect the plant uh-huh. from death. Phytonutrients, so-called phytonutrients or protective elements, in other words. Correct, but these are very special nutrients. These are not the regular vitamins and minerals that uh, you usually see in the typical RDA on the t- conventional diet thinking. You mean flavonoids and coumarins and these kinds of things, carotenes, or is that what you're talking about? No. No? They go far beyond that. Okay. These are called stress-activated nutrients, and the most potent, uh, and they can mimic the effect of exercise and fasting on your body. It's a fascinating. You can discovery. eat these, so you can eat these foods, these nutrients, and mimic the effects of exercise. Get the same effects Very as correct. exercise. Let's give we some examples. All the trouble. Name names. Well, for in, for instance, uh, we found that the most potent. We are doing some studies right now. Um, which will be published hopefully by the end of the year with a group of scientists. We found that the most potent nutrient, not all of them mimic the effect of exercise, but some of them do. And the most potent one are found, are simply removed out of the food chain. They are found in box, pits, and pills that we currently regard as dietary waste. I, I'm yes. sorry, say that again. I didn't understand. Did you say bark? Bark, bark of trees. Okay, what else? Rhizomes. Oh, peels, peels, rhizomes and peels, is that what you're saying? Rhizome, peels, and pits. Like oh, pits, pits, like apricot pits. Correct. Uh-huh, okay. So we, what's interesting is that these elements that were removed from the modern human food chain were actually a large part of the early human diet. Some believe that the early human diet was about 60% box and rhizomes. We, mm. we did Even a, tell the listeners what a rhizome is. I don't think people would rhizome, understand. Rhizome is the, basically is the, the peel, the cover, uh-huh. of the stem of small, small plants. Okay. And that's it's not tough to digest? To that's not tough, high fiber, real fiber, tough it's to digest? It's very no? fibrous material. But look, look at this. Uh, so many of them are actually alkaloids. Uh-huh. They're extremely bitter. They have a yellow, general yellow color. Medicinal. But correct. And scientists already figure out that there's something very intriguing with this nutrient. Yet it may take another 10 years, maybe less, maybe much more, to reach mainstream because when the public will be aware. 20 years. Stress, science and stress nutrition can affect our life perhaps even double our lifespan, maybe even triple or quadruple. Wow. The whole industry will have to change. So my project, I've been intrigued by that on the past 10 years. I always believe that if stress is so critically important for our life, there must be something in our nutrition that relates to stress. And now science is finding the evidence and it accumulates. For instance, one of the nutrients is called resveratrol. You oh, yeah. probably heard how of resveratrol course. increased the lifespan of organism. Yes, is that uh, one of these I, one of these elements you're talking about? These the stress activated elements you're talking about? Correct. However, resveratrol is not one of the most potent one, and probably the industry spiked too much hype uh-huh. about it. The truth is that these nutrients appear as complexes. They appear in certain kind of food or part of plants or even animal food. Uh, for instance, another stress compound is vitamin D. That's what animal produce in response to stress. Uh-huh. And, and it does have outstanding effect on the body that go beyond the effect of regular vitamin D. But we are being too technical. The whole idea was to bring back this nutrient to human to reintroduce it and that's what we do and soon we're going to launch this line with all the science and the blog and the vision and the information so the public will now will have access again to now, soft nutrients that are basically the missing link in our nutrition now i'm assuming these saf type of foods can help you with intermittent fasting can help you eat less calories in other words if you eat high saf foods you won't have to eat as many calories i'm assuming that's correct Absolutely. It's not, okay. not, not just that. 
even if you eat higher calories, they will still They'll protect you. you. I got it. They will it. give you effect that go beyond the effect of exercise, calorie restriction, or fasting alone. That's what's so, interesting. Think I, about the logistic, Ben. Yes. Your exercise is limited to the duration of your exercise. Let's say you exercise 30 minutes a day intensely, okay? The impact will go later, but it's after all limited to the amount of time that you put on your exercise. And the same with fasting. Fasting is limited to the duration of your fasting. Let it be six hours, eight hours, 12 hours, 18 hours, or 24. But it's limited. What's interesting about the soft nutrient that they impact your body as long as they circulate in your system. Mm. Theoretically, All day. you can get such a long-lasting, rejuvenating effect yeah. that human haven't experienced in the past maybe hundreds, maybe thousands of years. Ori, we only have a couple minutes. This is so fascinating. But tell me some foods, high S SAF foods. And I, I'm interested in animal SAF foods as well as vegetables and plants and fruits. Well, the end, the the... The plant parts actually, again, appears in rare trees and the, the most potent ones and roots that typically we don't get in the supermarket. However, looking for simple stuff, look for widely grown plants, a weeds like turnips, parsley, cilantro, you know, turnips, white ginger, grown nuts and seeds, and um, non-domesticated species do not use fruits that are giants or GMO. GMO can never be soft. Uh. It has to be a wild type evolutionary conserve species. Yeah. Does pesticides and fertilizers, that's anti-SAF probably, no? Absolutely right. Genius okay. question. Absolutely right. Fertilization is like overfeeding. It takes Ori, away the stress response. Ori, this is so fascinating. I didn't, I didn't even know about SAF. It's not in your book, The Warrior Diet. So, so hey, we'll, we got to have you back on, Ori, because this is too much good stuff. I'll, I'll be in touch with your publicist. We'll have you back on. Thank you so much, Ori, for your work. God bless you, buddy. Thank uh, that's you. That's Ori Hoffmeckler. His book is The Warrior Diet. He's got a whole new element now called SAF, uh, Stress Activated Food, which I didn't know about. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks so much for listening, folks. Tomorrow we'll continue talking about fibromyalgia and generalized pain. Have yourselves a wonderful, awesome, beautiful day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.